So I was trying to find a little bit of inspiration and I ended up watching these design trends of 2025 video. One of the trends feature was one called the bento box style trend. So I thought it, this would be a really interesting idea for a video. I ended up getting inspired to build a better tool for DaVinci Resolve. So I also made a freebie that I will be featuring in this video. So how can we do this bento box style grid type of thing in DaVinci Resolve? As always, there's not just one way of doing things, but this is one way that I will show you how to do it. Once you have your clips that you want to use and they are all colored, well, you don't have to color grade them right now. You can do that later on because you can always open that uh, Fusion Comp. So you have the, let's say, three clips we want to use. We're going to select those and we're going to right click and then create not a compound clip, but a Fusion Clip. The thing is here that if you want to change these clips or maybe adjust the color later on after you've built your bento box uh, style of grid, you can just open this in timeline right here and then you can edit or make any changes to the clips right there. Okay, I'm going to close this for now. All right, then the next step after you're ready is to go into Fusion. So we're going to open that clip and here we're going to see all the three clips stacked on top of each other. And we don't want that, obviously. But the way to fix that is, first of all, we're going to press Ctrl and Spacebar and add a transform to each of those. You don't have to rename these if you don't want, but it's just a thing that you can do if you want to keep things organized. All right, let me just zoom in a little bit. Gotta keep everything on screen. All right, we can move our media with these shape right here. Now, since all of our medias are here input as a foreground to our merge node, we can use this merge node mask input to create our bento box masks. We can use a rectangle ellipse if you want, but it's not going to be that good to use. Or you can use a polygon if you want to make this shape a little bit more, less just a square, right? So if you wanted to make a rectangle, for example, you can connect these right here. And we're going to move or place a rectangle somewhere in our grid. Let's say we want these to be a little bit bigger like these. We can put these right here. And if we press two on this merge, you can see that merge node, merge node right there. Now, in this case, since it's a little bit wide, we're going to have to zoom in a little bit or increase our media. Now, these clips were all in 4K, so we can zoom them in a little bit. It's not going to, they're not going to lose that much uh, quality. I'm going to target the action right here so we can see it happening. So it's me painting right there. That's actually that piece right there that you see I was working on. I still haven't finished it because I still don't know what direction to go with it. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any ideas, let me know. So we have that first one. We can actually just go ahead and create two more with the same rectangle and then just adjust the position of these. Now for this second rectangle, let's make these right here, for example. And then the third one, I'm actually going to be placing it up here. But I'm gonna make these the opposite. So it's gonna be, let's see, 0.5, and then make these a little bit taller, like that. Try to match that height a little bit. Now, if you wanna be a little bit smarter and you wanna, don't wanna deal with the issue of aligning all of these, now what you can do is use something like Figma and then create your grid right there and then bring them in as a vector file. So you have all the masks in there and then you just use those masks since those are already aligned because in here in Fusion, we don't have that option to uh, match the other things like you have in Figma, for example. So we have our third grids. First of all, we need to adjust our media so that they are all on our proper grids right here. I don't know what was happening right here. Let's see. Let me see. Where's the action right here? Oh, it's that right there, I think. And then for the third one, this is vertical. We don't have to worry that much. We still have the action right there. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Then if you want, you can adjust the corner radius for them a little bit. 0.2 or something would be fine for them. Now, this already looks sort of like a bento box style. Great. Okay, 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 okay. Now let me pause for a second. Now, if you have been a subscriber for a while, you have probably heard me mention these a couple of times. 
So this video is brought to you by the Suave Bundle. If you want to get over a thousand tools and elements for DaVinci Resolve, then make sure to check out the Suave Bundle, which includes the Paperfall effects, the Split Screens Toolkit, the Mosaic Pro Tool, and a bunch of more toolkits that will definitely help you do things a lot more efficiently in DaVinci Resolve. So if you want to check it out, make sure to go to bundle.suave.com and grab yourself a copy of the Suave Bundle. Let's continue with the video. Here, what you can do is add a background node. And we're going to connect this background node right there. Now we're going to copy these three. I'm going to connect these like that. And I'm going to connect these to the background. We can take this solid out of on all of them. They are just, and then we're going to adjust the border for them. Like, take a look. We're not seeing anything because we need to see, see the immersion over here. So I'm going to make these like that. I think that's a little bit too much. 0 0.06 and add the same border style to all of them. Now, what happens if you wanted to have a little bit more control over the corners? That was one of the questions that I came up or came to mind when I was trying to do this. And I was like, what if I just wanted to adjust three of the corners. That's what led me to build the little tool that I will be featuring really soon. Okay, now since now the this part is what brings a little bit more complications to the process because you have to mix around with these masks and this is only affecting the border right here. So if we wanted to use this rectangle, we're going to do this by creating a new instance for this. I'm going to get rid of that mask right there for now. I'm going to create an instance of this background and I'm going to use this rectangle on that one. Now, what you can do is create a copy of these masks, or actually we're going to use a polygon. I'm going to put a polygon right here and I'm going to just do these masks around, let's say this area, I think they'll cover the circle area enough and I'm going to subtract that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have another instance of these background. And I am going to connect these to this instance again. And we have this instance right here. And I'm going to create a copy of these, both of these things. And if we take a look at these, we have the opposite. So I'm going to invert these and I'm going to make these in the corner zero. If we take a look at the merge node of these. Now we have that same result. It is a little bit of a workaround, right? <laughs> so if you were smart, you just do this grid in another software or vector plat, uh, vector program, and then that's going to make your life a lot easier. And then you're going to have to connect this merge node again to that background. Now we can see that whole thing again with that straight corner. And then you can change the color adjusting these background right here. Since we have an instance, then we can change the color of all of that. And then if we go to the edit page, we can see our bento box style grid. Now, the more you do uh, or the more bento boxes you have, the more you have to adjust things, right? Now, in this case, I actually just animated these to the song that you saw in the intro. So I played around with the merge node keyframes and then also just like uh, the actual level keyframes of the masks right here. And at the end, I just animated the length of it of the last one because i just didn't think the the just fading in was working well with the song that's what I, that's why i did that just to add a little bit of a variation to it so now let me tell you about the tool that these inspire me to create now as you know this colored border effect here in the default effects that davinci brings looks something like this you have the corner radius to adjust the curvature of the border. You have the border width and it just adds the border towards the inside of your media, right? If you go higher, you're not going to see anything unless maybe let's make this smaller. Yeah, not, nothing happens because you cannot really adjust that many things. If we check the fusion overlay, you don't see anything because I don't think the masks were published right here for these. If we take a look at the fusion composition of these, it looks like this. We have the rectangle mask. That's these rectangle mask right here. Then these, then an instance. And then we have a channel booleans that adds that subtraction effect, I guess. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the tool that I built. Now, this one looks a lot simpler, right? So if we go and find better border, <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, right? So if we go and add this better border, first of all, we have a border effect that masks our clip right here. So you can adjust the, the size of these inside of the actual effect. Instead of having to go into the video section right here, uh, we can adjust the media. Then we can adjust the whole thing together. Let me turn these off for a little bit. Uh, so if you want to position these somewhere else, for example, let me just get rid of these for now. Let's say we want to keep these straight like that. We're going to make these a little bit smaller like that. Now, the actual thing that made me want to build these was because I wanted to adjust the corners individually. So you can do that in this one. We have the top left corner. If you just want to use, adjust that corner, top right right here. And then we can do the same thing for the bottom right corner. We have that there. And then I think that's good for now. So once you ha are happy with the result right here, you can just press Ctrl C to copy that. Now we're going to activate these again. Press Alt V and then paste the fusion effects attributes. Then now you can just move this effect right here again. And I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. A little bit higher, maybe. And I want to change this to be the opposite. I want these to be inside. Zero, zero, and then there. So I want these to be a little bit different in that sense. Now I'm happy with that being there. So I'm going to actually copy these again and just paste that on this one. And now I can move this bottom one and add these right there. Add a little bit of separation, maybe. It's not completely aligned yet, but if you have like a grid style uh, tool or grid effect, you could use that and try to align things a little bit more easily. And then if you want, you can change the color of these or adjust the border size of these, right? If you want these uh, individual one to be a little bit bigger, you can do that. And then just play around creating your sort of bento box style little composition. Now, let me show you what these fusion composition looks like if you were to do these from scratch. We open this infusion. Haha, <laughs> there, there we go. Let me make these smaller just so that I can show you these. This is what that fusion composition looks like. It's a little bit more complex than the other color border effect that comes by default in the Venture Solve. But this is how it works. We have, first of all, one complete section for. Let me press two right here so we can see these. So we have this complete ver uh, section for the top left. I had to create an instance for the mask and this one actually adjusts the corner. Uh, I can move this right now. Let me see. If I were to move the top left corner, you can see the, the whole thing moving right here. But that's because we have these nodes selected. So now we have these. If we mix both of them, we have this rectangle right here. We have this polygon right here that is adjusting the thing for all of them. Uh, so if we press 2 on the final thing, we only see that little section. So basically, I created the whole thing and just cut these into four different pieces. And then I had to combine all the different pieces so that we had the mask for the media part. Then we had the actual border part, which required me to add a little bit of more experiments in here because we have all of them coming together like like the actual shape here again. But then on this one, we had I had to copy all that those masks again right here. And create a new sort of like little composition. Uh, because all of them are connected again to these. And then set that up as a border sort of like for the outline. I had to get rid of that initial section without the erode uh, instance that we have here that allows us to adjust the border size. So yeah, that's what ended up looking like this whole shebang. Is that even a word? Now, what's the best part you might be wondering? Well, it's free. It's a freebie. Friday, I guess you could call this since it's Friday when I'm publishing this video. 
So it's a freebie Friday and you have these better, better border tool that you can use in DaVinci Resolve forever. Uh, I think it's pretty set up. I don't think I need to add anything else to these tools. But if you think I should, then let me know down in the comments. And to download it, just check out the link in the description and then you can find it right there.